Coming up next, just a few more guys, and we're gonna have a great time to after party network and chat with everyone. Coming up next, please help me welcome David Brody with Housekeeping by Design, Hotels and Labor. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity to be here today. Um, so how many of you stayed in a hotel over the course of the past year? You can raise your hand. Vast majority of people in this room. Uh, so we all have hotel experiences. We all have hotel stories. We all think about hotels, um, sometimes overtly, sometimes just as part of the everyday activity of life in terms of needing a place to stay and put our head at night. I'm really interested in the question of how hotels function as an example in the design world and how hotels function as an example of some of the conflicts that actually design can cause um, in the world, and specifically how uh, design can cause issues in relation to workers, workers' bodies, workers' livelihoods um, when it comes to different types of design questions. So I'm going to very briefly take you through two um, separate uh, case studies that I worked on in this book that came out about a year and a half ago, which you're seeing the cover of on the screen now. One type of design issue that I focus on the book is the way in which the material layout of the room, like typically when we think of design, right, we think of the physical world manifest, material culture is what uh, we often refer to it as. And one place where I did some work on this was in Chicago, at the Hyatt Regency in Chicago, which is a hotel with over 2,000 rooms, where I bet you some of you have probably stayed who are sitting in this auditorium today. And the hotel did a renovation in 2011, and interviewing housekeepers, I learned about a lot of the labor conflicts that came out of this renovation, the renovation choices which led to decisions which actually were physically affecting the bodies of workers, the way positions of beds were affecting them physically when it came to the very act of, for example, bed making, which is obviously integral to the work that housekeepers do at hotels. And then the other place that I just briefly want to mention, uh, welcome to the island of Kauai. If you ever get to do research in Hawaii uh, and, and have your <laughs> university fund your trip there, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, this is the Sheraton on Kauai, and the other facet of design that I'm very much interested in, besides the material facet of design, are issues related to what's called service design, which uh, focuses on things like workflow systems and how it is that work is divided up. And what I found on Kauai was that the design decisions around a specific green program, a sustainable program, that Starwood Hotels put out called Make a Green Choice, where you could opt out of housekeeping for several days, which sounds like a progressive, wonderful idea, right, to those of us who have left-leaning politics. Um, it certainly is something that's always appealed to me. However, what I learned on Kauai and also on Oahu was the difficulty and the complexity that these green decisions were causing to the housekeepers who had to cope with this program in terms of lost wages, um, in terms of the state of the rooms that they found and the, the, the denigration to the design um, upkeep of the room uh, after them not being serviced for so many days. So I leave you with this final thought, and I'm already well over time, but the next time you stay at a hotel, Think about some of the ways in which the design that surrounds you in these very overly, sometimes very well designed, but sometimes very overly designed uh, and sometimes maybe not thoughtfully designed spaces um, can, can lead to some complexity in terms of not only labor conflict, but also the individuals who are tasked uh, with the idea of maintaining those overly designed spaces. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, I have an exciting announcement. I am re-enrolling in the new school with a PhD in design studies with a focus in Hawaii. So that's exciting. Yeah, I can't wait. I love that idea. All right, so coming up next, we have Mark Gardner with Learning from Nayuki, hashtag honey money.